Well, good evening. Welcome to the Deerfield, Town of Deerfield Select Board and Board of Health meeting at 5.02 p.m. Trevor, can you read this meeting ID and yeah, passcode sure. number? Yep. So meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required pub public participation. Um, provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. Remote meeting connections are listed below. You can always find our agenda on the town website on the uh, front page, bottom right, where the calendar is. You'll see upcoming meetings. You can click on this meeting and you'll see our agenda. And that agenda has a dial-in number for those watching and want to call in for comment. The number is 312-626-6799. The uh, meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And should you need a passcode, it's 570012. Below that, you'll see a link for this meeting on Zoom, which you've probably clicked on to get here. Uh, so meeting attendees should mute their phones, which is star six for landlines, unless asking a question or commenting. All attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. Welcome to this meeting. Thank you, Trevor. Um, would the school committee like to call their meeting to order? I guess that's me, huh, Darius? <laughs> I should have a quorum. Yeah, we don't. We do not have a quorum. We do not have a quorum. No. Right. No, we don't. There's only four of us here. So okay. When we call the order, we'll chime in if you have any thoughts. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, well, we're here to um, consider the uh, sports, volleyball, um, oh, soccer, God. and and football, and um, soccer and volleyball are considered moderate risk and football is considered high risk. Um, soccer and football are outside, which is really wonderful. And um, volleyball is inside. I'm going to turn the meeting over to Carl. He um, is, can tell you all the details, but even though um, volleyball is inside, it is, um, it is, here we gotta be quiet. Um, you, you, um, you are not switching sides inside. The kids are wiping the balls down and there will be no spectators. Um, outside for football, it, my main concern was um, locker room uh, exposure because over the last few months, it's shown that locker room um, is one of the chances for more socialization and, and more um, contained group is where they get you get transmission. So um, Carl has reassured me that kids that are, are remote are bringing your own gear and the rest of the kids are going to come to, to um, football with their gear already on. There will be no locker rooms use and we need to keep can make that consistent um, and right along because the, the locker room is where it happens. For soccer, um, the meeting I had today, I asked what the soccer risk was from the fall um, experience. And it turns out that most of the clusters related to soccer in the fall were related from carpooling and getting to games. So um, again, if parents can drive the kids um, and very limited use of buses so that you know the kids aren't together, I think um, soccer can be handled as a moderate risk sport to be handled really well. We will um, be allowing spectators for soccer games, home spectators only, not away spectators. Um, we're um, going to have um, limited to households though, and, and then space between the households. So parents have got to really um, pay attention to how they're standing along the sidelines and make sure households are being segregated and space appropriate. Um, I have to say that um, I feel very comfortable with our numbers um, and also the track record of the kids. The kids have shown over the history of um, a more high risk sport like basketball, that
that um, they have a commitment to really pay attention and and keep their masks on and do as much protocol and um, and best practices as possible. So um, having I feel very comfortable that the kids will be equally willing to commit and um, because if we have a cluster, we have to shut them down. So this, this, I mean, I feel like the kids could go ahead. So it is my recommendation after you ask Carl any questions that we would probably go forth with this. So Carl, would you um, just cover a few of the things that I, I missed on what you're doing for protocol? Sure. Um... So volleyball, we would basically run the way we did basketball in terms of setting up the games and sanitizing and all those kinds of things, obviously following anything different in the guidelines, um, if there are any, but uh, being a less of a risk sport, um, you know, I think a lot of the concerns in that sense um, are not there. You know, we'll still have the doors open and go beyond um, what was asked, you know, what you had asked us for basketball and continue with those things because that it seemed to work. Um, and, I, and I will say um, one of the officials did give us a compliment near the end of the season saying like, you guys really have it together in terms of making sure kids sanitize and stuff like that. So that was a positive thing because they've been to other schools. Um, and I'm happy to be the school that they're like, oh, they're tough on us about this. So, um, so volleyball will be like basketball in that sense. Uh, football, we did talk about the locker rooms, like right now, any kids that are in school, uh, Scott Dredge has a spot for them to drop their stuff off that's not in the locker room. Um, so there's no, but there's no like changing in an area where they're kind of all mixing. Uh, we've avoided that. Um, the carpool thing, I, I know, uh, Missy, I think you had asked at the last meeting about um, if that would continue, the low numbers on the bus would continue. You know, th uh, in the next week or so, we're going to have that survey kind of go out so we can decide if we need one bus or two buses. Um, and one thing that I did stress to the basketball families was if they were going to ride, provide their own transportation, that they don't carpool with the other kids, because that would defeat the whole purpose of, of doing the carpooling. And um, it, they, they did the right stuff. Um, let's got that. I think that's kind of the gist of it. Unless people have questions, I think that might be the easier way to go about it. Um, yeah. Uh, this is Trevor McDaniel. I'm, I'm really proud of how, how you've ran, ran the, the basketball and how the kids are doing everything. And um, I just, I think we, our numbers obviously show that you guys are doing a great job and very, very appreciative for that. We're all nervous as can be, but um, it, it does seem like everybody's doing, doing the right things because they want to play and, and they want their kids to play. So um, they're following the rules. So I, I'm, I have no issue. I, I feel good about this. So um, I don't know are we else. allowing yeah. spectators for football? Yes, yes. It, uh, football and soccer can have um, home spectators only. Only. Um, Not yes. volleyball, correct? Right, right. Oh, and yes, we just have to right. have parents and spectators pay attention so that they are spacing between households. In other words, if you have parents and siblings, they can be together, yeah. but they can't be, they need to be space appropriate. Um, next to another household, you know, another family, that kind of thing. Yeah. The grandparents, if they don't live in the household, then they need to, to stay separate from the parent. I, I know it's very difficult. Uh, people are starting to get vaccinated now, but we have a lot of issues with variants potentially, and it, and it is really important that we stay on top of this. And it, there has been no transmissions in the school, and we've got to keep it that way. And I, and I think the kids, I mean, I am just so proud of all the, you know, what's happening in the schools because mm -hmm. everybody is paying attention. There's, there really hasn't been any real lapses. And, and so I think we should go ahead. And I, um, I'm just throwing out there that we are voting in the future to go ahead with the prom and all that, but the planning can go ahead because um, I've already been to two meetings where the prom protocols are supposed to be discussed and DESE has not come out with any guidelines at all. And it's, so it's been disappointing. And I, I, I told Scott that just, you know, start the planning. I, I think people are taking this seriously and their masquerade idea and being outside, I think mm -hmm. is good. From all indications, it's still aerosol based. 
yes, you can probably pick it up from the surfaces, but it's not really what we're concerned about. It's being aerosol. So anything that we can do to eliminate or reduce aerosol is, is really important. But as the weather warms up and you can get outside, you know, the risk is becoming very much less. And so um, even though football is considered high sport, uh, high risk, one of the things that um, we were able to discuss uh, just today, as a matter of fact, is um, everything is being um, taped by FCAT. And so you could go through and watch the game and you could see the cumulative um, time, total time that the kids have next to each other. So if there was a case, you could, con you could contact Trace off the tape. Mm -hmm. It's very hard in, the, in, a, in a game to be able to say, well, who, who was I next for 15 total minutes or whatever it is. And this is one way that we could do it. Contact tracing has remained and is the best number one way to contain. So um, with FCAT, taping this live and us having the ability to look at the tapes, we should be able to identify anybody that if there is a case, we should be able to contact trace it right away. So, I mean, I do feel pretty comfortable about that. Is there anybody that had any questions? Missy. Yeah, I just wondered if there was further guidance on spectators. I, I hear some, uh, some guidelines so far for home visitor uh, for, for home spectators only and for people congregating by household, but is that limited to any number? Well, the thing is, when, by the time we have games, I think we're gonna be in the next phase. We're in, you know, the phase right now, if you're outside, there isn't that many, the limit is, is higher than we want. So that's not an issue. And I think we're gonna go into the next phase. So by the end of the month. And that talks about, then you can have a way spectate, you know, your, the other team's uh, spectators. But I'm, I'm really not too excited about that because that's additional opportunities that we might have to trace and it will be very hard to get names. Whereas if we're keeping it to home, home spectators only and you're by households, people kind of remember who they're standing by or who they're sitting by. And that's really, really critical for the contact tracing. So I'm, I'm kind of limiting it to that, even though there isn't any other, I mean, it, it's, it's a stricter guideline actually. And as same as the locker room, um, there, the locker room guidelines, we're just saying we don't want it in the locker room. It's just, it's the opportunity of, you know, I mean, it's really sad to say, because you do want your kids to be socializing, you do want your kids to have fun, but it's clear from, um, you know, what was happening in hockey and all the clusters, if you traced them back, it went right back to the locker room. So as the Board of Health, I'm recommending that we still do not use the, the locker room as, and, and that opportunity is there for contained aerosols that might be infectious to other people. So, so the number we're actually strict. We're actually strict. No, the number, there's 25 kids on a team. So if you had a household, a couple of parents and siblings or grandparents, I mean, you're probably talking around 50 spectators. That's still way below the limit. That, that's what I'm clarifying. Households of people that are on the team, not friends or yeah. other people right. who may want to come watch. That's what I'd just like to clarify. Yeah, yeah we're trying to discourage that. Uh, I'll just jump in here. Like we did in the fall with field hockey, um, I basically created a spreadsheet that sh was shared with the families and they filled in the phone number, their name and, and um, oh, who's going to be there. And I had basically it took attendance on the way in and great. if they weren't on the list, they didn't come in. So oh, that's, and that's cool. why, that's and that's why we're really cool. limiting it to home spectators because um, the, the effort to tr for Carl to try to track down, you know, the other team's spectators, you know, it, it, and the games are being all in Franklin County. This, this is not going lower County, you know, lower Valley at all. This is, you know, the Franklin County and our, and Franklin County numbers are very good. So 
I feel pretty confident that we'll be okay um, as long as the protocols are followed. And I, um, based on the kids' performance so far, I would say they're more than willing to participate and, um, you know, have a commitment to follow the guidelines. Olivia has a question. Um, I think Carl pretty much answered it. I was just wanting to know um, how, because contact tracing is so important, how mm -hmm. we were going to keep track of, you know, who was coming and going, if it yeah. was family members or, you know, if kids wanted to come watch their friends um, yeah. and that sort of thing, just um, because that's hard to keep track of. But um, yeah. as long think, as we know who those people are. Yeah. Yeah. No, Carl is, Carl's, the way Carl is doing it is, um, it's a little bit onerous, but honestly, it's 100% can't contain. And if we had an exposure um, and that we were worried about it, we could be on it within a day. And that's the whole point uh, is, you know, we've been working really, really hard uh, to make sure we're responding within 24 hours, everything has been contained and contact tracing and contained. And um, so I feel like the system worked and that's what we need to do is keep working with the system, what we had so far that was effective. Excellent. And the same as basketball, there'll be no one inside watching the volleyball games. Is that true? No, okay. no, I do not feel comfortable with that. Um, FCAT will be um, taping them live. Uh, and I'm, I know parents are discouraged that they can't come in and we might even do, you know, if our numbers are still remain good, we probably will do a senior night kind of thing like we did for basketball. But, um, Having that contained room, even though it's a large space, you don't want, you want to keep the number of the actual people low as possible. And that keeps our risk as low as possible. So if there- Do you need a motion? Yeah. Okay, so a motion to, um, to approve the um, spring sports. I think they're calling spring. Uh, it's winter it's two. It's, winter I think it's two? called, it's <laughs> soccer, volleyball, and football. Okay, so make a motion for winter two uh, sports to move forward based on the protocols that have been set out by the administration. Dave Wolfram, second. Is there any further discussion? Uh, I only have one question for Carl. Are any of the helmets on the football team have clear shields on them? Um, they do not have clear shields, but uh, the... Was it the, like the booster club is buying all of the kids the full like everything mask double layered like it's part of their you know like it won't come off when they take their helmet off so oh, good. It's, like, it, like it's uh what is it called uh i don't want to balakava is that what it's called i almost okay. said i almost said baklava that would have been wrong <laughs> <laughs> right it, but it's all one piece. <laughs> yeah. you're making me hungry <laughs> yeah it's all one piece so it's like their mask is you know attached to their face there in that sense okay, okay. great that's good um is there anything else before we go on yeah trevor no. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Ness. Thank you. Um, Bill, since I, you didn't call your your uh, school committee meeting, I guess you don't have to adjourn. <laughs> yeah, I guess we never had a quorum, so we were never really here. So Yeah. <laughs> well, I've seen you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming. Um, yeah, thank you. I, I, I just wanted, want everyone to know that I, I feel like the schools are doing an excellent, excellent job. And yeah. um, the cooperation, the level of cooperation has been outstanding. And um, Carl has been super, super patient with me because I, I harass him all the time. You know, what's, you know, what, what about this? What about that? And he's always has an answer and he's been wonderful. So, um, and it usually is the day of the meeting because uh, I've gone to a meeting and I find out new information and then I got to harass him again. And so he's very patient. So thank you. Thank you all. Have a good weekend. Yeah. Bye-bye. From the stay, but I'm sure you, you can head out. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Um, we're a little ahead of the time, um, but I see that Chris Harris is here. Is he, okay. he was here. Yeah. Oh yeah, here he is. And he's um, not just on a phone this time. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I'm, I'm actually, I do exist, actually. So. Yes, welcome. So good to uh, see you. So, uh, Chris, um, 
were you got waiting for anybody else or were you just doing this yourself? No, I'm just doing it myself. I, I conferred with John Sis earlier, John Nove from Deerfield Historical Commission, et cetera. So great. Um, well, I, we can certainly, we'll talk about the money in just a minute, but why don't you go ahead for our audience and give us an overview of what you're trying to do? Well, we kind of um, got alerted less than a week ago, about a week ago, that there is a grant program that has actually existed for a few years. Um, it's called the Massachusetts State Historical Records Advisory Board, and they specifically are focused on preserving um, uh, objects, sites, and collections of documents related to veterans in Massachusetts, strictly related to veterans. So this is very different than like Community Preservation Act, historical preservation and stuff like that. Um, and so once we learned about this, um, you know, Don Nove from the Deerfield Historical Commission got a hold of me, he says, you, you think there's anything out there? I go, absolutely. I've been talking to John Sis about all these copious amounts of documents that we have going back 10, 20 years that have never been digitized, have never been archived electronically in an organized way where people from the public, students, researchers, family members can get at them. And it has to do with all the veterans uh, sites in cemeteries that we flagged. It also has to do with a lot of research that was done in 2012 around the street sign project. And that's a big chunk of, of data. And so I said, yeah, absolutely. This is, I looked at some of the previous projects that were awarded grants. And I said, well, we're right in the ball game. This is exactly what they want to do. They right. want to avoid losing all this history, these records due to fire or floods, what have you, or just sheer Mold. loss of paper. And, um, and I said, I had already been thinking about this and talking to John about this, John Sis, that is, who does a lot of the veteran stuff in the town and saying, oh, this is a good uh, project to get other volunteers. We're gonna have to get some professionals in terms of the IT side of it. But yeah, students from Deerfield Academy or Frontier, their history to get involved in this, et cetera. And then uh, now there's grant programs out there. And so that's why we quickly got it in front of the select board. Now we, we did a little bit of work and Casey uh, Warren um, is aware of this, um, that it doesn't seem like to be a core Deerfield Historical Commission project in that it's not your typical type of historical mm -hmm. assets that they're usually worried about. So it really needs to be sponsored in our town at kind of the town of Deerfield select board level. But um, you've got support from all these other entities. Okay. Um, I'm absolutely in support of this. Um, so do you wanna just talk about the money? Um, I, I'm wondering if this is eligible for CPA money. I don't right. think it's eligible at all for CPA um, because we're not, uh, because it's documents. So it's a whole different type of his. No, you can, ar you can archive, you can archive. Yes, We've course. done yeah. town, our town meeting. I mean, our, our town records, we've been archiving under P, um, C, C, P. Okay, I didn't, I didn't realize that, but I mean, we can look into that. I mean, that's, so the way I've structured it, I've done it like a budget, you know, with expense and, um, and, um, and funding, and they count volunteer hours as on both sides, right? So, so towards it, and they'll match up to 50% of what your project cost is with a maximum of 20,000 overall. So they'll match up to a $40,000 project. My best estimate is this is 17 to 18 grand. If I include the um, hours of volunteer at the rate that the state of Massachusetts gives, as well as there's some hardware, there's some software purchases, and we're inevitably gonna have to have some IT professionals that will have to be paid. Um, we'll get as much volunteer as we can um, in terms of the web and, and mobile app type uh, programming and structure. So, so this, we go to the state for let's say 8,500 overall. And <laughs> I have $2,000 of cash coming from the town of Deerfield. That can come from the town of Deerfield. But so far, that's all I have coming from the town directly in cash. So well, um, one time, one time. 
So my question is, if it doesn't come from CPA, uh, Casey, do we have a, a um, line item that we can fund this on or do we have to wait until July or what are we talking for? Is it, I don't know where we pull, we pull it from, is the question. You're on mute though, sorry. You're muted. You're muted. <laughs> if I didn't talk to myself so much, I wouldn't be muted, but I talked to myself. <laughs> okay. um, I was thinking of a couple funding sources. I hadn't thought of CPA because it's been a while since I've worked in CPA. Asheville didn't have it. Yep. Um, and I didn't have much of an intersect with them except for the park project last year. So I had thought of um, contracted services as a support because we do have grant support in there for one project. Um, the other thing you could do is we could put the ask in if the select board is championing, championing the project, um, perhaps put it through via the select board expense. Um, why don't you talk amongst yourselves for a minute while I look at something? Um, so I think I'm, I'm in, you know, in favor of the project. Obviously, I, I want to retain the records. I, I worry a lot about the records we have you know, in the old senior center building, molding downstairs, there, you know, there's a lot in town that needs to get, you know, we need, we need storage whenever we build something so that we can store all this stuff correctly. And, and obviously digitally is, it would be a lot better than building a space for it. Um, but anyways, uh, so I'm excited about the project. I think it has merit. I just want to find the right avenue of funding for the, I mean, $2,000 is not a ton of money, but it's, mm -hmm. it's got to be, uh, put in the right spot. So I just might need a little bit, you know, a couple of days to figure out where that go, where that comes from for match money. But it sounds like a great program. And I know based on your history, Chris, that you'll shepherd that through. Um, very I think this fits. I, I feel like this. Yeah. Oh, did I lose you, Carolyn? I, I feel like this is definitely, uh, and, and of course, yeah. Oh, yeah. It says I'm on. No, you're there. Second. Go ahead. We can hear you. Oh, no, I'm okay again. Okay. Um, I'm, I feel like it's, it's definitely CPA funded kind of project. Yeah. And um, uh, we should be able to, and the timing is perfect because they're taking applications. So yeah, um, and so, so the application, the application deadline was March 1st. Um, but I can get, I can ring Tim Hilshey and see because oh, they, they got delayed to, um, they got delayed to their first review meeting of applications till March 18th. So, so I have time. He, he might take it based on the fact that they did not have a review meeting yet. Oh, okay. Well, perfect. let's give it a try. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, I'll ring him. I'll ring him over the weekend, etc. Just find out. And he also could comment yeah. and, as and to our, whether it's and our appropriate. Town meeting has been. Um... Yeah. <clears throat> I think we're okay. losing a bit, but she was saying our town meeting has been pushed off till June, so yeah. everything's kind of chipping a bit. So. Um, if um, not, I don't. I'm sure we could try to figure out where we could get it from. Chris. Yeah. Um, after say this gets up and running, I, I think you, we can do it. What, Dave? Do you have any feeling wait, on this on how we should fund it? Rocky was speaking. Chris, after this is up and running, and you know, it's done and everything like that. In future years, would it just still be volunteer? Rocky, we we lost you. No, you, Carolyn, you're the one that's losing everybody. <laughs> Your internet's cutting out. Go ahead, Rocky. Okay, so in a few years, um, it would just be volunteers that would be still entering all this information to catch up. Yeah, oh, because, am I? because oh. okay, yeah, because I think uh, I think Rocky, um, right. to your point, we're going to make the database with the latest technology and and techniques of how you get this data in there, and then. We don't expect a copious amount of information going forward. There could be families that donate veterans records so we can upload that. And, and there could be, you know, new veterans, you know, interred in our cemeteries, et cetera. But it's not a laborious amount of work and it could easily be maintained okay. by with volunteers. All right. All right. Okay. okay. Uh, you know, the way I look at it, we might not want to wait for a CPA vote. Uh, to get this rolling. Right, so, there's a deadline. Um, I'm thinking that, I don't know, if, you know, this is Casey's call more than mine, but the uh, that 
maybe look at contract and services and just apply to the finance board for a transfer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When's um, Chris, when's the, the beginning of the grant period? Is it in fiscal 21? In other words, before June 30th or after July 1st? I would assume it must be after July 1st. I don't know for a fact, but the deadline for getting applications and the drop dead is April 9th. So that tells me it's got to be a fiscal. Yeah, where well, they want to review it. And, but they want, they actually want your preliminary application in right. by the 15th of March so that they can go back and forth with you before the deadline. The yeah. state started doing that. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. So David, it's probably something we should plan for for FY 2022. Okay. So I'll check yeah. into it. I had mentioned it to Brenda, but we hadn't circled back around to it because we were working on CARES today. It seems like we could find find some sources somewhere between all of that somewhere, but and but let, let Chris move forward with the process. Yes, I agree. Okay, it's important. that sounds good. Do we need to vote on that or just kind of? We don't, okay, so I would make a motion to to uh, approve um, uh, Chris Harris's um, project moving forward with the. Um, Veterans Preservation Grant, um, and we will fund it either through contracted services or CPA funds, preferably CPA funds. Dave Wolfram will second. I don't know if Carolyn's got us or not, but I'll, I'll just, any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. And I would guess we lost. Is there Carol. any further discussion on oh, this? Oh, there we go. <laughs> She's about 20 minutes oh, yeah. behind us. Yes, we're good. Let's vote. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Hi. Yay. <laughs> we got her. <laughs> okay. I'm a here. <laughs> we got you, Carolyn. We got you. Thank you. Hi, <laughs> <I>, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, Carolyn is trying to say. For five minutes. Thank you. We got you. Oh my God. All you right. Can't stand up. She must have had the computer in the back of the This is just an effort to keep me from talking. I know it, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dave is trying to keep the meeting short. <laughs> right. Right. Let's see. It is all a right. Bright. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for all your help. No, Jeez, no, I, know. No, I know. It's terrible. I can't believe this. Anyway, thank you. Um, I know. She, Some she is announcements. Um, I do have an announcement. Maybe Trevor should read it. Oh my God. Okay. Can you see this? This oh. is, you got to announce this. We can't see you. Try turning your camera off to see if it speeds your um, load up. He's the. All right, I'm going off the computer. Can can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, I'll make a couple of announcements because I don't okay. know who has up in front of her, but I'm just going to do a couple. Oh man. Of okay. Um, um. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. okay. You're delayed. Um, I just want to amount, announce that. Um, thank you. <laughs> this is impossible. Yes. <laughs> Can you mute her for a moment? <laughs> I can. She'll yell at me. I no, know. I'm teasing. I'm usually teasing. Usually her, her buffering isn't this bad. Oh, no. Well, it this is, is a Deerfield Recreational Baseball yes. sign-up. I can do those. I can do those. So 2021 Deerfield Recreational Co-Ed T-Ball Kindergarten First Grade. Um, the uh, the season is here, uh, so you can sign up through the rec department. Um, the department will provide bats, uh, balls, helmets, and a team shirt to be worn at all games. The cost is $50. Parents must provide a baseball glove, water bottle, face mask, and hand sanitizer. Practices are one night per week, beginning when the fields are ready. The games are to be determined. Um, for those uh, children grades one who are interested in playing rookie baseball, your coach from last year must recommend you uh, to the recreation director. Um, let's see. So these, uh, let me just look at the date. So registrations are accepted March 1st through March 31st. 
So, and you can get registration forms online at jerfieldma.us slash backslash recreation, or forms can be mailed uh, to Deerfield Recreation Department, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, or dropped off in the drop box. Um, please make checks uh, payable to Town of Deerfield. Um, you can always get in touch with Sue Antonellis. Uh, she's at rec department at town.deerfield.ma.us, or you can call her at 665-1400, extension 107. I'll just go through a couple other things. So also, Deerfield Rec Baseball, that was, you know, that was the younger kids. Deerfield uh, Rec Baseball is also um, ready. So I'm going to read this because there's a lot to it this year. Welcome to uh, the 2021 baseball, the year of changing protocols, fast uh, face masks, social distancing, uh, sanitizing cleaners. Um, with vaccinations and greatly reduced COVID numbers, we're going to try and have baseball season this year. The Deerfield Board of Health has given us the go to start the registration process just realized that everything could change at any time, which is true. Deerfield Recreation Department provides comprehensive recreation programming for the community. The team concept um, provides a fun environment to learn skills and fundamentals. There, uh, though there may be some exceptions based on roster numbers and ability, we believe the following grades, not age, are appropriate. Our uh, baseball program offers three levels of play, T-ball, grades kindergarten and first, rookie, which is grade second, minor, grade three and four, and some fifth grade. The progression through the levels is achieved by mastering fundamental skills. Coaches will be teaching these skills in a progressive manner, building upon skills learned in previous sessions. The success of our program depends on volunteers. We encourage you to volunteer as a coach or an assistant, and that is really important. Um, it really takes parents to step up and help. I mean, you don't have to be a master baseball player or professional. The kids just need you there. And, and if you can take a season and help out, even if you don't have any kids and you just want to give back some time, it really, it's so important to the kids to have a coach there um, and really important to the program. So um, there's T-ball grade, grade one, uh, grade, uh, kindergarten one, and I already read through this grade second, rookie is second grade, and some of first grade. Um, so again, registrations are being accepted March 1st through the 31st through the same things. Um, let's see. So the cost, uh, this is the most, uh, let's see. So everything is again, $50. Um, then minor league grades three, four, and five. This is the most advanced instructional level of play. Umpires will be used. Coaches will be working on hitting, fielding, throwing skills, pitching, and catching mechanics will be introduced. We highly recommend that grade four players and some fifth grade players play at minor level uh, to continue development skills. That cost is $60. School choice student, uh, students, please add $25 to all levels. So it'd be 75 or um, 85. So, and then Frontier Girls Softball League, same kind of setup. Um, so registration at the same time, $50, all of that is the same. And their program is for girls grades two through six. Their league consists of Conway, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley. In the past, we've mixed up girls from all four towns. This year, we are going to try and keep the girls from each town on the same team. We will probably have to mix the Conway and Waitley girls, you know, because of um, number of girls on each team. Conway girls will register with Deerfield uh, Recreation. Um, our hopes to have one or two practices per week, one game per week for six to eight weeks. Um, and they will follow all the current protocols. So again, please sign up your kids uh, to play some ball this year. And I'm done. Thank you. Um, I just want to say uh, so far, um, softball and baseball are considered moderate risk. And um, boy, I'm got to. No, you're there. We got you. Okay. Baseball and softball are considered okay. Baseball and softball are considered moderate risk, and the biggest so far that I can understand, the biggest risk is to the catcher. So um, we need to be sure that we're we have to come up with some way to protect the catcher a little bit more. Or two that we had discussion on that. So um, I, I feel pretty comfortable about going forward with this. Mm -hmm. Great. Sounds good. So please sign up. Yes. Um, is there any other Slickman's 
uh, announcements? Um, I, I will just talk a little bit about COVID vaccines. Um, so I guess, I don't know if we've met since our last clinic, um, but we had a clinic at the Treehouse um, Brewery, which was very successful. Um, and we're really pressuring the state to do more for us. Um, we hope in the next, uh, the week of the 13th or 15th, I think it is, um, we're trying to get a lot of teachers done. I'm pushing for a clinic at Treehouse to make sure that we can start doing our teachers. Uh, President Biden had requested that um, the, the month of March be really focused on getting our educators vaccinated so that we can make sure our schools are open and safe. Um, so that is a, a goal we're working on in conjunction with trying to get our seniors and all the people that are, you know, at risk um, as well um, vaccinated. It's been uh, frustrating beyond belief. Um, and we're hoping in the next three weeks, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine will be out and in more numerous and it's a one shot deal. Um, you know, so we're hoping that will make, be a game changer for us. But it, it has been immensely frustrating the whole process. Um, but we're trying for you. We're all trying really hard. Carolyn is working literally day and night on this. And, um, and we are we're all doing everything we can. It was very successful. The Treehouse, I just can't thank them enough for loaning us that facility. And, and it was um, it was flawless. It really went really well. We can do more than we had. So it's just a matter of proving that to the state and getting the state to give us vaccine. and everybody you know is short on vaccine so so that's that's kind of all i have to say on that other than please you know i keep seeing cases coming in so it's not like we're out of the woods because my email dings every morning with cases um and it's not a lot um and they're you know they are segmented a bit but they're still happening. So please don't let your guard down. Just because people are getting vaccinated doesn't mean you're safe. Um, it is still happening. Cases are still happening and, and you never know which one is gonna be the one that's gonna you know, put you in the hospital. So we want you to be safe and we're very close. We're very, very close to putting this behind us, but um, you know, we just need your cooperation for a little, little while longer and we'll get there, so. Trevor. Yes. The reason why this is so important is because the variants that we have right now, the UK variant and the um, South African variant, are in fact, um, you know, not any worse than you know. Uh, and and Johnson Johnson did had trials against them, and and did really well. But what we are concerned about, if we don't stay vigilant and wear masks and social distance and, and keep working on vaccinations, the Brazilian variant will reinfect. It doesn't, see, it seems to be um, not as well um, handled by the vaccines and they have, so far they can, it can reinfect people. So what we need to do is keep the transmissions down very low so that we can not have that. Um, it's rare in the United States at this point, but we can't have it here. And so we, it, and it won't transmit if people stay vigilant. So please, please keep working on this. Yep. Mass social distancing. I, I do have one other topic. I, that I, I know I sound like a broken record, but it really works. And it's very simple. And it's a pain in the neck. There's no question. But honestly, we just need to do it. Um, uh, Casey, you wanted to speak to this. And then I, I also have one other comment before we're done to move on. I Go ahead. After the um, vaccinations um, last weekend, I was talking to John and we we talked about preparing a thank you letter for Treehouse directly related to the vaccination. So I had prepared it and yes. put it in as part of your COVID updates. And I wondered if the board was willing to endorse that letter and come in and sign it. Absolutely, yeah, I read that. Thank yeah. you for doing that. Thank you very much. Um, yes, yeah, so I would make a motion to approve the letter to thank uh, Treehouse Brewing for the use of their facility for the clinic. Dave Wolf from second it. Any further discussion? Hearing all those, none, all those in favor? 
Have a nice day, Daniel. Dave Wolf or my? Carolyn Ness, I. Herbert Great. or yeah. Dave, why don't you just take over this meeting? I mean, this <laughs> no, is ridiculous. There's I can't about five minutes it. behind us. No problem at all. Yep, we can do that. <laughs> um, the only other, so the other selectman thing I wanted to talk to you about because I've been getting some questions on this. Um, is the residence on Kelleher Drive. And this may be in an, in an update later on, uh, but I just wanted to say while I had a few minutes, I've talked to Kevin. Um, we have been oh. waiting on a piece of culvert um, to come in. And there was one piece and, and it's been back ordered. It is, I believe it's here uh, by Monday or something like that. We're gonna get started uh, finishing that last piece. They just gotta get the set uh, footings in. The weather should be good next week. It looks like in the 60s, you know, midweek, which would be wonderful for everybody, uh, but it'll be good for the site. So I think they'll be able to get some work done there and uh, move along. I know that, you know, it won't be completed with guardrails and, and uh, new pavement until we get some decent weather in the spring. But at least the, the infrastructure will be done and completed and hopefully we can get some cleanup done and some of the equipment out of there. But I know they're due to come back this coming week. I think they were there today for a little bit too. I don't know if they're going to be there tomorrow, but on Saturday, but I think, you know, by next week, you know, within the next couple of weeks here, that should be cleaning up a whole lot better. And we just apologize to the residents of, of Kelleher Drive. It has been a nightmare. Everything that's gone wrong, could go wrong, did go wrong on that job and um, just fighting, fighting with the contractors on that. So um, I just want to give an update, you know, verbally on that. So we're aware of it and we're pushing on it hard to get it done. Said it better than I could, Trevor. Oh, good. <laughs> yes, they were out there and Kevin did speak to them this afternoon before he left. Yep, yep. So um, I think that's all uh, That's all I had for, for discussion. I don't know, Dave, do you have anything that you, anybody else wants to talk about? No, I just uh, wanted to get back to yeah. the COVID just a Thank little you. bit. Yeah, please go ahead, Dave. Um, you know, have people understand that, you know, even if the shots aren't 100% effective, they're going to keep you out of the hospital. Right. And going to keep you from dying. Yeah. So, you know, it's important that people get that shot. Yes. You know, whether it's the Johnson Johnson or the Moderna that we're using, uh, but, yeah. you know, it's important. Uh, you know, it's important that we, you know, you, yeah. you know, I know we're working with Charlie. Uh, trying to make sure that we get all the teachers vaccinated, um, which is very important because we do have to get those schools open back up. And yep. that's the only way we're going to get the economy rolling again. Right. Yep, absolutely. Um, Travis? Yes, go ahead, um, <clears throat> Rocky. For the seniors that didn't get uh, didn't get to the clinic and everything like that. I just want to commend the staff at this uh, South County uh, Senior Rocky. Center. Yes, they've been going. They've been bend, uh, bending over backwards and going out of the way to help other uh, seniors that couldn't get in there get appointments in some of these other sites. Yes, and I just want to commend them for uh, uh, trying really, really hard. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that, Rocky. It's true. They have, you know, even if we couldn't get into ours, they have worked hard to get them into, you know, Big Wire, CVS, and I, you know, Sharon's been doing a lot of work, Christina, Meg, everybody, Sue, they've all been working really hard to try and get our seniors, um, you know, if it's not through ours, it's it's through another one, because it really doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't have to be our clinic. I just want them in somewhere to get a shot. So, um, and, and again, I, I've been told that hopefully by the third week in March, we'll see a lot more Johnson and Johnson coming to the state. And maybe that'll get us a lot more doses to get moving on stuff. But it, it the, the path from the state to, you know, the, the state has chosen and the federal government has chosen to use the profit method instead of local boards of health who've trained for 15 years how to do this. They've decided to give it to, you know, CVS and Walgreens and everywhere where you don't have space to sit and you don't have an EMS person to watch over you to make sure you're safe. They just, you know, it's, it's for the profit. And it just drives me so angry on this whole thing of how they're distributing it, why they're doing it that way and why they're not using local boards of health who know our seniors and know our people and have trained for this for so many years. I don't know how many nights 
Carolyn and everybody has given up to train for this and then to just bypass it. Uh, it's so frustrated. Uh, so frustrated. I can't wait for a ballot box. I'll tell you that. So um, that's that. So sorry, <laughs> just mean to go off on a tangent. Um, if there's, uh, let's see, I, other than if there's any other COVID stuff, we can come back to that or, or speak up. But I was, um, there were, there was the update on buy recycled memo and policy for approval and signature. Casey, did you want to hit on that a little bit? Yes, it's every year DEP as part of their requirements for certain grant programs that we participate in. They request that we update our, we call it the buy recycled memo and the buy recycled policy that we send out to departments about how they should be, what they should be buying for, for recycled products. And there's a variety of recycled products and a variety of content based on, on what it is you're looking for. And so we got specific language from Franklin County Solid Waste Management District who helps us with quite a bit of our grants. Jan sent over some adjusted language that DEP would like to see. So Pat updated the memo and I, I um, made it look all pretty because formatting is something that I try to do. Um, so we went through with the two of us and the memo that is presented in your packet reflects that updated language. So one, we need a memo that says, please do this and these are the reasons why. And two, you need the policy itself that defines mm -hmm. what the expectations are. So yep. if you could vote to approve that and sign at your earliest convenience, we would appreciate it or allow us to use your signature stamps if that would be easier. Sure. So I, I, I think it's a great program. I'll just read this a little bit. So the public gets to know of. So recycle project uh, product purchasing policy, whereas the town recognizes the need to make more efficient use of our natural resources and create markets uh, for the materials collected in recycling programs. And whereas the town can support recycling activities by purchasing more products made of recycled materials when such products meet quality requirements and are available at reasonable prices and terms. Now, therefore, the town of Deerfield hereby adopts the following recycled product purchasing policy to the maximum extent practicable and consistent with the demands of efficiency and cost effectiveness. All town employees with purchasing authority shall adhere to the following standards. One, all purchases of paper products, including but not limited to paper copy, uh, excuse me, copy paper, stationary envelopes, notepads, and file folders shall meet a minimum of 30% post-consumer. The decision not to procure recycled content paper products meeting this standard shall be based solely on the determination that the items are not available within a reasonable time period or that items fail to meet reasonable performance standards or are only available at an unreasonable price. So by every effort possible. Uh, purchase them. When uh, purchasing office, custodial and maintenance products or any other products uh, purchased by a town employee for town use, due uh, consideration will be given to purchase said products in a form containing recycled content material. Um, said recycled products uh, must be competitively priced and of comparable quality performance and availability. And three, town employees shall uh, let's see, town employees with purchasing authority shall become familiar with and utilize Massachusetts state contracts for recycled products and make purchases through the uh, state contract whenever feasible. So I would make a motion to approve that policy. Dave Wolfram, second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. She's going to say it. She's going to yep. say it. She's going to say it. Okay. No, maybe not. Well, at least two carry the vote. Carolyn, yes. <laughs> I Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> Thank you. I said yes. <laughs> I know. We got you. We, it was a question of how long it took for yes. us to hear your yes. <laughs> See, she'll hear that. She'll hear that explanation in a minute. Yeah. I think they put... <laughs> Put that I yes said yes. I said yes. <laughs> she hasn't quite figured out she's on an hour. <laughs> like a. Oh, I'm about God. to write a ticket for her. What computer. is going on tonight? I know. This is she so... can just go outside her front door and yell. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is awful.
I think you, it may be buffering on your computer, Carolyn. So I'm going to write a ticket. Yes. For you for Northeast IT. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. So, okay. So the next item on the agenda, let's just, we're going to move the meeting along here because it's six. Um, so it's appointments, resignations, appointments, uh, hires. Oh, DPW admin position. So we've been working as a town for probably a year or more working to get uh, some admin help in the DPW department. We had worked with the personnel committee um, and we've worked with DPW and Kevin to try and come up with um, a part-time position to help with paying bills and doing all the admin work to, um, for Kevin and the DPW department and Casey and um, uh, Kevin and, and uh, Brenda Hill, our town accountant had been working together and had placed, uh, had interviews and those interviews, uh, they had three uh, qualified people and um, they would all be good for Deerfield, but they did settle on one. And do you want to take it from there, Casey? Cause I, I might mess this up. I'm going to take it, where are you? That's fine. Um, so we did conduct a, a search process and this part-time position is budgeted at up to 15 hours per week of 1830 per hour and throughout that interview process um, one candidate brings unique qualifications to the position um, diane cornwell is a retired Burniston senior center director she has significant experience in municipal government excellent communication and strong organizational skills and an understanding of the need for attention to, de to detail that we increasingly encounter as we work in our, in our field. So we believe she's ideally suited to this position. And so it is our recommendation that the select board vote to hire Mrs. Cornwell at the part-time administrative assistant as the part-time administrative assistant to the DPW superintendent, sorry authorizing the town administrator to complete this hiring process. Completion of the hiring process includes a letter of an offer letter that would be include the, the details of the position, budget, hours um, that, that would be presented to Mrs. Cornwell and she would sign off and return it. And then we would work with the treasurer to collect all the information we would need to hire her. Great. I, I would just say, I know um, Diane Cornwell through the work she helped us with the senior center when um, when we were trying to put that budget together and Christina was new and I think just getting hired. And so it was great to have her help. And she helped a bit with the plan uh, for kind of revisioning the, uh, the senior center and, and, and working on the budgets and the funding for that. So I had some good, good communication and work with her. So I was really excited to hear she was applying and then um, I was thrilled to find out and not surprised though that she uh, rose to the top because she is an excellent, excellent candidate for this work and very happy to hear that. So I would make a motion to uh, approve the, um, the hiring of Ms. Cornwell, Ms. Cornwell for the part-time position as assistant, as administrative assistant to, to the DPW superintendent. Dave Wolfram will second that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Dave Wolf, am I? Trevor McDaniel, I. Let's wait. Yes, Carolyn. Yes. We got hey. it. <laughs> All right. um, so. I swear I already said yes. <laughs> we heard we you. We know. It's just delayed. Um, okay, great. That's great. So uh, that is all set. Um, any, uh, Casey, do you, uh, oh, we do have some mail and I, I do want to go through that quick. And, and uh, this is really for us to read, but I wanted to make a couple of comments first. And I, um, so there, there are important things in our mail to this week, which is the planning board proposed bylaw changes. They have some here that are significant, we need to uh, voice our opinion on. Accessory apartment, solar, formula-based business, and site plan review. And then there's a letter also in our mail, um, the FERCOG meeting notes on outdoor recreation on the Deerfield River. So we should take the week and read that and then have some more discussion next week on these items. But um, I will just say, um, 
I, I'm concerned on the bylaws immensely. There, there are some that I'm very, you know, the aspects of some of them I have some, a real problem with. But um, so for the, the accessory apartment bylaw, I just, I wanna understand, I think it's important. I've asked for this and I'm, I'm really excited it's happening. I just, there's, there's some questions I have as far as, you know, um, it can only be a half the floor size of the existing one or 9,900 square feet. I'm not sure that's going to be large enough for, you know, maybe some, I, I'm just not sure why the size issues. Um, and then, yeah, there's quite a few things that I'd like to formulate questions on, like, um, th there was an accessory apartment shall not be occupied by more than three unrelated adult residents. Uh, who's supposed to decide and go in and check people, people's, you know, how do you know they're not registered, you know, relatives? Um, I, I just, some, some uh, enforcement issues that I think are, we're saddling our building inspector with that, that seem to be outside, um, outside the aspects of what we truly want them doing. Uh, but, and then, um, so I have questions actually, on that. Um, actually, the accessory apartments originally were supposed to be in-law apartments, right? right? Yeah. Yep. And not just a income source. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. I mean, that's I. I envision this as more uh, that I wanted people to be able to have their relatives live with them. Um, you know, when mom gets older or something, dad's gone, and they need to take care of her. They can put an addition on the house and maintain that with her in there. Um, or, um, you know, uh, a family member is on hard times, but they're going to expand a little bit on their house and add a, add a bedroom on and a kitchen on. And then, you know, families need to be together more often, especially nowadays, taking care of kids with all this, you know, with COVID going on and even with the economic turmoil. I think that, you know, we used to be a country where m multiple generations lived together and, and survived together. And that's the only way they could survive is each taking care of each other. And we've gotten to this point where we're building McMansions everywhere and they're gigantic places and you need massive road frontage and you you don't, you know, um, I, I think it's a waste of resources. And I think, um, you know, we're separating people so much um, on these big chunks of land with no, um, no ability to live together. Uh, so I think, I think it's important to make these changes and I'm glad they're doing that. Um, but I, I just have some questions on some of those items. And then um, I do have some questions on the solar uh, problem. I, I, my biggest problem with this is um, hold on casting a shadow on people's property. Um, you know, we're restricting people's ability if they buy a piece of land to build a house um, and, and uh, of any size that they're choosing. If they want to build a a colonial in there, if it casts more than a, you know, an eight foot shadow on the northern section of their property, they're not allowed to build it. I, I have a real problem with that. I just, I, I'm not sure. Um, I understand the intention, but I'm really concerned about what we're doing as far as limiting people's access. And that, that's a taking by the town. It's saying we're supporting this bylaw and we're saying that this property is no longer buildable because you've, you know, because somebody may cast a shadow on a section of the property. So I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. I understand the need for making sure that you have access to the sun for solar, but you know, those are some of the decisions you make when you're looking at a piece of property. I, I don't know. I just, I'm concerned about that whole section and how, how enforceable that is. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering about all of these bylaws, are these being reviewed by attorneys? Um, where are we at with any of this stuff? Casey, can you answer? It does, um, is Lisa involved with this process or is it something we're gonna find out last minute that you know none of this is, uh, is doable? Um, so that's a very good question. And I appreciate you asking it because generally what we do in terms of managing the budget but also managing the work when it comes to legal services is we wait till we have a more substantially complete bylaw um, draft to look at. And so the one that I think is most substantially complete is formula-based business, which council has, we've, we've sent to council, but not with the revisions. Mm -hmm. um, these other three had been working through the continual process with planning board since their inception. And yep. so one of the things that I said to you a few weeks ago was I would try to keep getting this information out to you. Yep. Um, 
that is a question is once we get to the substantially complete language, legal counsel will review it. Right. Um, so I guess my question is, is that would be my normal process? Is yep. there a process you'd like me to change? No, I think, no, I think that's good. I just want to make sure that, that, you know, before we spend so much time on this, that, that some of this is reviewed. Okay. All right. right. I will reach out to Lisa. Not what, what are the unintended, un, unintended consequences? The formula-based uh, business bylaw, I am so not in favor of. I, I, I think, I think it's a horrible piece of legislation. I don't want to see it in Deerfield. Um, I just, I am, it's so un-American and, um, I, I, you know, I understand the intention of wanting to control what your town looks like through zoning, but, um, you know, businesses spend a lot of money to get, um, to build their brand. Um, and, and this is, a extra, you know, if I was, any, if I was a business coming to town and I saw this bylaw on the books, I would turn and run. I would be not interested in build, bringing my business to Deerfield. This is a big, you know, thank you, no thank you. We don't want you in Deerfield unless you follow all of our guidelines. Um, I, I, or, you know, you can't, if anybody takes the time to read this, I really implore the public to understand what this is saying, that you cannot have any business that, that um, not just formula-based business, a type of retail business establishment or a restaurant, tavern, bar, or other food service establishment, which is under common ownership or control, or is a franchise, and is one of 10 or more businesses establishments worldwide maintaining any of the following features. So if you have six of these features, any one of the six features, you are uh, the following six features, you cannot, uh, you are a formula-based business and now are restricted from doing any of these things, you can't have the same uniforms, you can't have the same sign on your on the building on the outside, or you may have the same sign, but you can't have the same sign in the same menu, or the same sign in the same, you know, um, attire for businesses. I think it's just, it, it's, I just think it's completely un-American, and it's not, I don't see it, see it as the vision of Deerfield. I may be in the minority, but I am so against this thing, completely. Wow. I understand where it's coming from, but that's just my two cents on it. I, I don't, I'd like to see this revisit some other way. My, my reading of it, the subtext to me is that they're trying to limit so we don't have any commercial growth within the town of Deerfield. Yep. And that is not a realistic ex, uh, expectation. Uh, those of us that are involved with the budget and stuff know that the commercial part carries an important part of our budget. And yep. if we stop that means your residential taxes are going to go right out of sight. And, you know, you've got to balance these things. You know, yes. we have got to have responsible growth, uh, but we have to have that growth. Quite right. frankly, Treehouse might not even come to town if this stuff was in place yeah. before. Yep, exactly. And Treehouse is going to be an asset for us. Uh, you know, they've already demonstrated how how community oriented they are. And, you know, um, Dean is uh, very personable and has worked, come forward and want to do everything that they can for this town. Yep. And yep. that's what responsible growth is. It is. And they'll come with problems. I mean, there's no doubt that there'll be issues that we'll need well, to yeah. address, but we have tools to do that. And if you need stronger tools, let's look at them. But this saying, you know, that we're going to, we're going to label businesses a specific way and then regulate them because they have more than 10 in the, in worldwide. It just, it, you know, people, businesses, they start out small, you know, and they try to grow and they try to, you know, they produce a lot of jobs for people. And I think um, it's just taking a really negative view at business. And I, 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 I'm just so against it. If you need some other specific language or through zoning changes or something to make sure that, um, that you're not getting a specific, you know, toxic waste dump in your building, in your, in your town or some, something other than, you know, this is, this is America and it's commercial. I mean, that's just, it, we have to face the facts that that's what this country is and it's how we pay our bills. Um, and, 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 you know, limit, the other, it's crazy. the other thing is to me, and, you know, maybe I'm reading it wrong and here again, the attorneys will make that determination but by the way this is written, 
they're essentially saying it can't be appealed to the zoning board of appeals. Mm -hmm. Their decision is final unless it goes to land court. And that's not what we have a checks and balances here. We have a political arm and a non-political arm that review yep. these things. Yeah. Yeah. Here again, like I said, I may be reading it wrong, but that's my interpretation of it. Right. Yeah. I'm just very concerned about it. I, yep. you maybe, I, I understand the intention. I really do. I get where you want to have some control over what comes into your town and not, but this is, I don't think is the right answer. So, no. um, and the last, uh, I remember the last piece of. Deerfield so, River Outdoor Recreation. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh the, well, the, the Deerfield proposed amendments to site plan review. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sorry. I have not read that. That kind of came up out of nowhere uh, as far as I was concerned. I, have not I just seen. wanted to mention. Um, yeah. She's waiting, I think. Oh, I. the one thing I wanted to just bring up is that we were talking about um, um, the pandemic is continuing. So we have B, uh, BBC and, um, you know, different restaurants, Johnny Figs, that want to have outdoor still. So um, uh, we don't have to take a formal vote. It wasn't on the agenda, but I wanted to make sure that you both agreed with Dick and I um, uh, feeling like Anybody that wants to be outside, continue to be outside. Um, so yes. And it's for public health reasons. Um, if people do in fact want to um, have this continue once the pandemic is over, then we're gonna have to... Can I put it in the chat box? Yeah, I've got I want to just make sure Dave it's okay. Okay. Yeah, I got it. So so really ask uh, if it's okay with Dave. <laughs> this is torture. Um so yes. Um I, I will um uh, I will just clarify for everybody. Uh, I was talking I got with that Dick Morse code. Right, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking with Dick today too, and uh, uh, I think that uh, Dick's had some questions whether Wolfies could continue, you know, when the weather permitted to be continuing outside uh, dining. Um, and we, we want to encourage that. So businesses that still want to serve people outside because the pandemic is still going on, we want to encourage that work. And I think we need to do, we do need to look at our bylaws. I think it's important to do long-term, but um, but we do need to look at how we handle alcohol consumption ex out outside. Um, and that's kind of the issue right now is that we're allowing it because of the pandemic and we can get people outside, it's safer. But um, so, you know, as the pandemic comes to a close and as we work on this, we want to look at um, our bylaws to make sure that we regulate it and it's safe for the public for outside consumption of alcohol while eating, um, you know, while you're serving, I think it makes sense as a restaurant kind of kind of thing. So I'm okay with just kind of letting it go. I don't think we we're going to take a vote or anything, but we were just going to reiterate, you know, to Dick through this meeting tonight that um, we understand because of the pandemic, we are continuing outside dining, you know, until, you know, a date uncertain at this point, um, till, it, till the pandemic's over. How do you feel about that, Dave? I'm totally in favor of it. Okay, great. You know, it's, uh, I think that what we're seeing right now is going to be long term. Uh, yeah. Not just because of the pandemic, but people like to eat outside. Yep. And I think, you know, as we looking at the center of Deerfield, yeah. um, I agree. We can do things to enhance that. Yes. You know, whether it's by, you know, enhanced parking at the Leary lot. Uh, and, you know, there's a number of things that, we, you know, I know that you've been working on that you know this is going to make the center of deerfield once we get rid of cumberland farm yep. lot a very attractive place to be and to come to yeah yep for sure yep that's what we're hoping 
So I think um, so everybody so should. I think we should take a road trip to Portsmouth and see what they did up there. I agree. I think it's worth doing. I think we really should investigate. You look, you look, look at, at other towns that was in pretty much disarray not that many years ago and what they've done up there. Yep. And we can do it here in Deerfield, a lot smaller footprint, but we can still yeah. do that here. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Definitely should, should take some field trips and look at that stuff. Um, so I guess we'll, we should look at all of our, um, I guess the main thing is to look at all of the stuff that's in the mail. There's a lot in there. There's all the bylaws stuff. And I want to have some, um, some clearly thought out things to send back to the planning board and to town meeting when it gets there um, on that item. And then there's the, the other large item was the um, FERCOG had, uh, I think there was a meeting recently about the recreation on the Deerfield River. This is not just a Deerfield thing. It's not just a Charlemont thing. It's all up and down. It's, you know, thousands of people come out of the cities to, to tube and drink and all kinds of stuff up and down the Deerfield River and they cause havoc for our neighbors and our residents along the river. Um, and there's a lot of trash and, and, you know, erosion of the, of the river bank and there's just all kinds of stuff to work on. And this looks like it's a pretty comprehensive list of things that people have come up with. And I just haven't been involved enough. I know this has been a, a issue of Carolyn. She's been working on for many years as well. And we're trying to find some sort of, solution where all the towns up and down from Charlemont row all the way down through to Deerfield where the where the bottom of the of the bowl where everybody stops um, we all work together uh, with and and address um, DEP and and the state and um, all this together as one group so there's meetings going on about that I wasn't able to it, some of these attend during the day and I just can't get to them during the day but um, so let's read all this stuff and, and circle back on it, I guess. Um, there's, there's a lot of stuff to look at here. Yeah. Yep. All of a sudden, my computer went dead, you guys. So I'm all oh, okay. That means you can bring it to me and we can try to get it fixed, Carolyn. <laughs> okay. I was going to ask anyway, but. To it. Well, at least you're not on delay right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little better. <laughs> Now I could talk. Yeah, now you're sorry. We just yeah. added oh. another hour to the meeting, right? Yeah. Oh. oh, wait a minute. My computer's shutting down. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so was uh. the computer in the back of your vehicle? Right. No, no. <laughs> oh, that's right. No. Oh, no. We were hoping that, that did it put the vehicle out of commission? No, no, it didn't. Oh, tell me it did. <laughs> no. No, no damage, no nothing. <laughs> of course, there was no damage to it. <laughs> it's a tank. <laughs> it's a tank. I know. <laughs> the other, the other bumper is the one that the person that <laughs> hit me, tail, yeah. tail ended me, is the one. They're that totaled. Him. Yeah, they're totaled. I'm sure. sure. He has a tank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh Lord. All right. Okay. Oh, this has been a long enough meeting for Friday night. Does anybody have anything else? Yes, yeah. please. Quick. Oh, please go ahead. Sure. Okay. Finance committees. Next meeting is 316 2021 at 5 p.m. I recommend that the board consider attending. The treasurer, collector, town clerk, and the DPW superintendent will be presenting their budgets. It might be useful to yeah. hear that conversation. What time was that? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Okay, on the sixteenth. On the sixteenth. Um, I also just want to mention I uh, attended um, a webinar yes yesterday on um, federal tracking federal relief funds for um, school districts and you know municipalities. And um, great. We do not have to worry about um, deficit spending on the. Uh, and and then having our money, of, you know, free cash affected by FEMA or um, the COVID CARES Act or this new one that's coming. Um, okay. Sean, Sean Cronin from um, the Department of Revenue is going to send out a memos on this, but um, as long, the money, you know, what's going to happen, it, it's obviously it's federal, so it's a federal timeline and, um, and you know, which is a different budget year than our budget years and yep. and all that kind of stuff but it was very clear that they understood that we were not our free cash was not to be affected by 
Oh, you know, that's good. Either the deficit spending or the extra money. So, yeah, it's very good. So yeah. I'm very pleased. And and um, there is a you know website that you can go to and you can put in calculations and stuff like that. And um, and it, and they recommended it's the FEMA um, reimbursements are coming faster than normal, but it's still slow. And it's a hundred percent though. And it, w w they upped it to a hundred percent, and it is coming. So chances are we will get money before um, June thirtieth. That'd be great. And Casey yeah, actually great. reached out. They recommended reaching out to MEMA, and Casey actually did reach out to MEMA, our rep, and um, they're tracking it, right, Casey? Yes, they right. I reached out yesterday. I got a response today. Um, we are in a seven part process for one project, um, a little bit further along, and we have two projects out there for FEMA, and they directly mm -hmm. correlate to some of the CARES Act grant funds, which are coming through the state. So yeah. until we have a firm idea what this, the feds are going to pay for, it impacts our CARES Act fund. So I did, right. I had reached out periodically about this and we're we're in the queue it's just the queue i'm hoping the queue after what carolyn told me last night which she just told you I'm hoping yeah. the queue will move along faster great and i know you just had to put in a cares report today yes yeah. we just Thank turned you. in the cares act report for the last quarter of 2020 um, I know that's a I, lot of work. So thank you to, you know, you and Brenda and Brenda did the majority yeah. of that, but we coordinate with the gentleman that works. We've been working with on the FEMA because those reports correlate Yep. and just the responsibility of the actual upload and stuff. So she, yep. she and I work pretty closely on that. Thank you. Um, I had a couple of other things. So I don't know if okay. you saw my email, I sent a forward or I forwarded an email I received from Senator Comerford about early voting. Okay. It would, and then I had a conversation with Barbara about yes. what we could expect. Barbara, I think we can expect to see the legislature vote on early voting next week. So yeah. Barbara would like some time with you on the 24th to discuss mm -hmm. her plans related to early voting. Right. And I so think we've we're... scheduled her on that meeting agenda. That'd be great. I did talk to her too a little bit today and we, we were thinking we would continue with the, um, you know, early, if, if, if allowed, continue as we did last time with early voting uh, by, by mail um, or Dropbox, that kind of thing. It doesn't right. need to be in person. Um, they can certainly come in in person and drop it off in the mailbox, but just to keep the, the risk of transmission down. Um, but um, so, and I think most of this stuff will continue on like we had last time. So, um, but yeah, so she'll speak to us unless so we wind up with a meeting before the 24th. <laughs> Well, she also has loan documents that she'll want to speak to you about as well. Okay, great. So we already That's had her on for one discussion item. Now it's two. Okay. Um, and she seemed okay with the 24th. Um, I'm continuing to work and I had, wasn't able to finish it this afternoon. I'm hoping Jack Davy isn't mad at me. Um, I'm continuing to work on the capital improvement planning committee's revisions to the plan itself. Yeah. And I have some more information that I'll start inputting. But one thing I wanted to let everybody know is I've been working with Civic Plus about the web website. They're our web host mm -hmm. group. And they put together a subscription proposal that would give us a little more flexibility in how we do revisions to the website, what we have, what the transition to a new platform might look like, and would give us a little more flexibility. So I'm reviewing that proposal and Okay. Should have some more information next week. All right. Um, the other thing is, is so the finance committee is meeting on the 16th and we had tentatively talked the board, I mean, sort of to me and um, John Pachurik about this next meeting around the North Main Street Park. Mm. And I think a date that we could do it is the 18th of March, but I wanted to get the board's feedback on that while I had you all in the same meeting. So as the town administrator, I'm throwing out the question because we would want to start publicizing that if we want to do that. I know that David probably already has a conflict with it based on what I see for his schedule. Yeah, I probably would be available. I just, um, 
wanted to get a little more information before we had another meeting, but um, okay. that's all. Well, why don't you, we have a, we have a few days yeah. before I okay. would want to actually get something out. So um, all right. why don't you circle back around with John? Okay. I'll do that. I'll do that for sure. I wanted, <clears throat> Trevor, I wanted more public comment. That was why I wanted more meeting, another meeting. Yeah. I just, I felt like we needed more public comment. Yeah. I think we do too. Because I just, yeah. I mean, we just don't, I mean, there's, we got some ideas from the last meeting Yeah. and then people can see them. I think they need to have more input again. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm all for more meetings too. I just, um, yeah, I haven't wanted to get a couple other things figured out too in the meantime yeah. about that site. So, well, we want to, we want to make sure that people have an opportunity to think about it because mm -hmm. I mean, once we commit, to what we want you know um it's gonna be yeah. really hard if people start complaining afterwards so mm -hmm. it's, it's better to have yeah. more input yeah um gosh there was some other thing that i really wanted to talk about and now i completely forgot if you give me a oh, half well. a sec i can interrupt and maybe it'll come back to you sure. i have one th one other thing that i almost realized i didn't mention so i may send out a request for executive session for a litigation situation for the select board, depending on information I get next week um, okay. around the EBI consulting. Okay. I'm waiting for some more information and then I'm gonna reach out to the board. And All right, also, again, another contractor that's been giving us a hard time. I wanna make sure we're moving forward. So sooner than better, Casey. Yes, I'm just waiting okay. for a response from on, on a question we had yesterday. Okay. And um, actually, I thought just remembered what it was. Um, the March 25th meeting for the five county select board meeting. Yes. On um, police reform. Is that moving forward, Trevor? I haven't seen anything yet. I I believe so. I, I could have to check with John um, Edwards and, and everybody. Okay. I, I haven't, I've really been checked out of that a bit too. With everything going on with the vaccines, I just, been consumed. I know. Um, yeah, the vaccine clinic, the twenty fifth and twenty sixth. Yes, that's true. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but this was this was the, the at yeah, night meeting. at night six o'clock. I believe it's on. I believe it is. I've I've seen emails from John recently. So Casey, okay. I actually John and I had that conversation when I asked him a question related to STAM because my STAM group is very interested in police reform too. And yep. so I think Jonathan and I'm I'm hoping we'll hear from him next week, but I think Jonathan was on vacation. He was this week. Yep. He may yep. he may be circling back around to that next week. Yep. Yep, for sure. OK. Um, also, um, uh, the FERCOG got 500 doses total for even though they requested they request orange is now part of our region. They requested 600 for orange, 800 for Montague. And I think 1500 for Greenfield and they got 500 this is the next week. So total there's for total. all of, for everything, for Greenfield and everything. Um, well, Tracy didn't text me back because I wanted to know what she just said, 500 doses for Greenfield, uh, for uh, Montague and, and Orange. So I text her and she did Greenfield get any, and then she hasn't texted me back on that. So, um, okay. But those... they still need to, I'm, I'm still going to send an email out that they need to put us in. The, it doesn't matter if they don't, if we don't get it, but they need to request it and they're not requesting it. And that's an issue. Yeah. Um, and, and, and then two or three weeks, we're going to start seeing lots of vaccines. And it's, but it's frustrating right now that we're not even in the mix, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know we've been talking about it. We don't need to rehash it, but I yeah. just got the text on that. I just came in. Just okay. I wondered about what, what we would get, if that's 500 yep. for, for, for just for, for a cog to split up between Orange and Montague. Yep, I guess so. But we've been in the well, queue for a long time. So why isn't- 26. Yes. The, they're going to be ordering that um, next week. So we need to have them order our 500 
second doses, but we need them to order more so we can start doing some more first doses. Yeah. And, you know, so anyway, I'm just, I'm just I will send you all an email. Um, I mean, I will CC you on the email. So I send okay. Linda. All right. I'll CC Tom and Jonathan and Bob Armstrong and just so they're in the loop too. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Motion to adjourn. Or any public comment, hey. sorry. Yeah. Anybody want to say anything? Well, yep. then I okay. will make the motion to adjourn. All right. Sounds good. Um, any further discussion? Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Rocky, for always being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Carolyn, for getting on the phone. <laughs> Helps at the end. Yeah. Whoa. yeah, that was pretty painful. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No worries. Yep. All right. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye -bye. All, Good night. all those in favor, I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Ness. Okay. Good night, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you, Casey. Thank you. All right.